When it comes to getting acquainted with snapping and box cutter, just looking at the top bar, we see that there's a magnet icon that when you enable, puts you in the dot state. In fact, clicking the next icon will actually switch you over to grid, but for now we'll be talking about dots. So with dots enabled, by holding control and hovering over the surface, we see that dots appear, which by clicking and dragging will allow us to use them as a jump off point for what we're attempting to do here. So right here, I'm actually holding alt and clicking and dragging off of that dot in order to drag from that middle point. And then I'm beveling the shape, holding control again in order to grab a different dot and just working this middle area. In fact, this time I don't actually need a dot. I'll just create this cut on the surface. However, I'll hold control and grab this middle point in order to expand on this particular area. So that's really in a nutshell how you would use dots inside of box cutter. New to this version is the ability to set fade timing. So right now you can see that when I hold control and release, there's a nice little fade whenever the dots are exiting the screen. If you want, you can change this to something a little lower where the moment you release control, everything actually just leaves the surface immediately. And you can do the same thing with the entry time. So right here I have a entry and exit time of zero and dots will behave just like they would before where they would come and leave immediately on the release and press of control. So let's press control N and make a new file. And here we can talk about some of the expansions when it comes to dots. So new to this version with the traditional dot system is also the ability to have world dot. So if I just press X and delete this cube, we see that we have a single dot on the surface indicating our world. And I could even roll the wheel to adjust basically the grid size, which we can see at the bottom here being changed. And what this allows me to do is basically draw utilizing dots just in the context of world. So in this case, it actually isn't working very well because it's not snapping the second point. We see that we're able to snap the first point, but the moment we begin drawing, we're not able to snap. This is because we need to enable increment lock. So now with increment lock, when we begin drawing, we're actually able to draw precisely to that 0.5. So with this, you can actually draw using a world dot without a whole lot of issue. And this is something that's exclusive to the default dots, which we refer to as the dynamic dot system. Alternative to this is the static dot system, which was introduced in the last version but now has a area proper for users to go in and get acquainted with it. So we'll talk more about that in just a moment, but for now I'm just drawing some shapes utilizing increment lock along with dots in order to draw precisely. In addition to this, we also have view dots. So view dots was something that was around previously. We'll create a cube for this. And basically if you begin drawing off of the shape, you're utilizing view. And the same thing with dots, if we use control off of the mesh, we see that we are able to draw using this view dot and also snap to it, giving us the experience of a grid, but with the simplicity of just a single dot. So sometimes this is a way that I like to work whenever I'm creating things in a rather precise fashion. Of course, I'm able to roll the wheel in order to lower the amount of distance in between each increment in the event that I need to get something a little more fine. But just like that, we're able to now use world dots and view dots inside of box cutter once again.